dear colleagues, I'm really glad to take part in this German Russian symposium. And uh, from the previous talk of my colleague, Denise Kudryaptev, you can see that in our department, we intensively investigate uh, seismic receptor. And I would like also to draw your attention to nicotinic, oh sorry, to nicotinic receptors and other members of this loop receptor family. And I would like to briefly summarize our findings in this field. Just very brief introduction. Nicotinic receptors are uh, pentameric ligand-gated cation channels. You can see for example, in neuronal type nicotinic receptors, there are homopentameric consisting of identical alpha subunits and heteropentameric combined by alpha and beta subunits. Three D, D structures of all cis loop receptors are pretty similar and uh, included extracellular, transmembrane, and cytoplasmic domains. Nicotinic receptors, they um, found not only in uh, neuro, uh, neurons, but also in glial cells, in immune cells, in epithelial cells, etc. Of course, they are involved in the spectrum of pathologies, neurodegenerative, psychiatric diseases, sepsis, etc. And what do we have for the probing of these receptors? So, Snake alpha neurotoxins and mollusk alpha conotoxins are specific, oh, let's see, <laughs> maybe not so specific, uh, inhibitors of certain subtypes of nicotinic receptors. And more recently discovered at least six proteins which, are, uh, which have fold like neurotoxins, they are modulators. And of course, uh, the most diverse group low molecular weight ligands in both action and in structure. And uh, holding such arsenal in our hands, we were able to develop new methods for detection, uh, quantification, and evaluation of nicotinic receptor activity. And these new tests gave us opportunities to uh, discover some new ligands and the um, way of action, as well as to elucidate new aspects of physiological activities of nicotinic receptors. So, immune detection of nicotinic receptors is hardly reliable because of very high unspecific uh, antibody labeling. And using snake neurotoxin, both natural and fluorescent, we were able to develop uh, special protocols for cytochemical and histochemical labeling of alpha-7, muscle type, uh, nicotinic receptors, GABA-A receptors. So, and um, these protocols were knockout proof or some other way proved. Uh, quantitative radioligand analysis of nicotinic receptors uh, was optimized uh, for studies of such small objects as substantia nigra. And facile screening of ligand binding and functional activity of nicotinic receptors uh, was performed with uh, developed or optimized fluorescence or calcium imaging analysis. We were able to uh, estimate ligand affinity for some uh, nicotinic or even GABA receptors as well as functionality of mutants of these receptors. And um, further, these protocols were used in our studies of physiological roles of nicotinic receptors. Neurogenesis occurs throughout life in hippocampus, and in particular in uh, the subgranular zone of the dentate juice. The adult born immature granule cells migrate to granule cell layer, uh, mature, and expand their exons to the target areas. During uh, embryogenesis, it's well known that alpha-7 are implicated in uh, neuronal maturation, and we wondered if it uh, can happen in adults. In collaborative works, 
using immune and histochemistry and neurotoxin labeling, we showed preferential expression of alpha-7 receptors on immature adult-born granule cells. And whole cell patch clamp recordings show that not only interneurons, which are enriched in alpha-7 receptors, but also immature granule cells responded to uh, acetylcholine. And this response was significantly uh, amplified by addition of specific alpha-7 receptor modulator. So all this data, and some beyond, of course, uh, showed that functional somatodendritic alpha-7 receptors are present on immature granule cell, um, cells of dendritic gyrus. And it's consistent with studies implicating alpha-7 nicotinic receptors in dendritic maturation of uh, granule cells. Another example of involvement of nicotinic receptors in brain neuroplasticity. In collaboration with Professor Ugrumov's laboratory, where animal models of Parkinson's disease, actually at early presymptomatic stages of Parkinson's disease, were developed and characterized. So uh, we use these models in our studies of the levels of nicotinic receptors at these stages uh, using a specific radio ligands. So uh, the main target areas, substantia nigra and striatum, because they are affected uh, in Parkinson's disease. And uh, nigra striatal system uh, is regulated <coughs> by polynergic neurons. So in most cases, we can see the drop uh, in expression of nicotinic receptors. But at pre-symptomatic stage, alpha-7 and alpha-4 nicotinic receptors were overexpressed, participating in compensatory mechanism at this stage. So another neural process uh, investigated was nociception or pain perception. So cholinergic ligands are well known to cause both pro-nociceptive and analgesic actions. Depending on the type of ligand, the way of administration, pain model, etc. So these data indicate that cholinergic receptors uh, are implicated in nociceptive mechanisms at different levels of um, pain pathways. And our study was um, focused on peripheral nociceptive system. Uh, here. Uh, the main uh, research object, meninges of brain. So, uh, it's the origin place for headaches. Meninges are innervated both by nociceptive trigeminal nerves and by cholinergic parasympathetic nerves. But the molecular mechanism of the interaction between these two system, uh, systems are almost unknown. Using electrophysiology of meningeal branch of trigeminal nerve, we showed that acetylcholine, <coughs> carbohol, and nicotine increased nociceptive firing in this sensory nerve. The molecular targets for this action may be nicotinic and muscarinic uh, receptors expressed on nociceptive neurons, as well as mast cells um, releasing a soup of pro-nociceptive mediators. Both um, degra uh, acetylcholine degrading enzymes were found in perivascular nerve fibers. And they are inhibition by neostigmine, which leads to uh, an increase in endogenous acetylcholine level, uh, intensified uh, nociceptive firing, but only in um, pathological model conditions after CGRP pretreatment. Calcitonin gene related peptide is the key migraine mediator. So, and there is a scheme of our finding. So, acetylcholine uh, released from parasympathetic neurons can reach uh, cholinergic receptors on non susceptible uh, nerve endings, provoking increase in. Uh, non susceptible firing or release of neuropeptides such as CGRP. 
or it can uh, act on mast cells and degranulate mast cells, releasing uh, numerous pro-nociceptive mediators. Possibly, acetylcholine can also approach meningeal vessels and, uh, lead, uh, and leads uh, to um, vasodilation and plasma protein extravasation, promoting he headaches. So these two systems actually can, of course, interact in brainstem, but this is another story. Here I mentioned the expression of cholinergic receptors on immune mast cells, and I would like to tell more about this field of studies. Previously, uh, we collaborated with um, Professor Marinus Kopp from Kyiv, studying um, nicotinic receptors of lymphocytes, sites, but this um, recent work was done on neutrophils with our colleagues from Pushina. So, not many details, just, just an idea. So, um, all neuronal uh, nicotinic receptor subunits were found at mRNA level. Uh, neutrophils uh, responded to application of nicotine and this response was inhibited by specific antagonists. Also, acetylcholine and nicotine can provoke an increase in uh, respiratory burst of neutrophils. Of course, um, uh, th there are a lot of other data, but our main conclusion from this work that alpha-7, alpha-3, beta-2, and alpha-6 nicotinic receptors can regulate specific functions of neutrophils, adhesion, and respiratory burst. As you can see, um, nicotinic receptors are really important pharmacological targets, and to treat their malfunctioning, we need new, safe ligands. Activation of alpha-7 nicotinic receptors is believed to be profitable in case of neurodegenerative or mild cognitive disorders. And uh, in collaborative works, we found uh, both natural uh, agonists for alpha-7 receptor and synthetic agonists. So this was uh, bromohypophorine. Um, Denise told you about this molecule. Um, it was isolated from new branch mollusk, and uh, it activates uh, alpha-7 receptors specifically, but not with, with very, very high affinity. So now we are trying uh, to get more affine agonists from derivatives of this molecule. And the aim of uh, another study was to design and to synthesize new quinoline derivatives um, with preferential uh, binding capacity to alpha-7 receptors, not to uh, heteropentameric nicotinic receptors. So, the synthetic part was done in Italy, and in our tests on nicotinic receptors, we found three substances with micromolar affinity to, uh, to alpha-7 nicotinic receptors, and they actually don't bind to alpha-4, beta-2. So, but uh, the pharma is needed not only agonists of nicotinic receptors, but also antagonists, such as tubercurine, um, which was uh, used previously as myrorelaxant in case of surgeries. <laughs> so, in uh, collaborative work with our colleagues from Leipzig University, we are analyzing action of new alkaloids from metisdar poison on uh, different cyslink receptors. So, this uh, work uh, is in progress now, and what, what was the most interesting, as I think, uh, on a nicotinic receptor, you can see here or here, they uh, act um, almost in the same way as tubercurine, but for serotonin receptor, tubercurine was much more potent. Maybe 
after, of course, additional experiment, we can tell something about structural determinants important for such different recognition of um, nicotinic, serotonin, GABA receptors in, uh, in case of these new alkaloids. And as a final slide, I would like to present to you our preclinical studies of azimiopsin peptide isolated from snake, which does not contain disulfid bridges. Uh, so there is a list of uh, planned tests. Um, we first started from um, proving its specificity toward muscle nicotine receptors, <coughs> not to neuronal nicotine receptors. And after that, our colleagues from Pushina, they tested efficacy in vivo of azimiopsin. And you can see that even low dose of 30 micrograms per kilogram can um, act uh, as my relaxant in comparison with control. Pharmacokinetics test showed that uh, the action of uh, azimiopsin uh, is not very long because after two hours there is a decline in uh, of uh, this concentration in red blood. And of course it's toxin, so it's toxic. And um, LD50 in acute toxicity test, it's about two milligram per kilogram. So it's uh, two orders higher than the, the lowest effective dose. Chronic toxicity test uh, didn't show any cumulative effects. And other uh, um, tests, they are in progress. But of course, uh, this compound is too toxic uh, to be used uh, as medicine right now. And we are trying to modify uh, this um, neurotoxin, uh, maybe to get safer but uh, effective uh, myorelaxin. So I would like to thank all my colleagues from our institute, from other institutes, and of course there are a lot of collaborative works present presented and uh, thank you for your, for your attention. <laughs>
Brilliant. Any other? Oh, yes, please. Dr. Chilka. Thank you for the presentation. In literature, um, the agonists of the nicotinic receptors are often quoted as PAMs, positive allosteric modulators. So my question is, the quinolins in your synthetic molecules, are they also acting in an allosteric manner? And then the second part is, if you talk about antagonists or blockers, could we say that they are negative allosteric mechanisms, or has it nothing to do with allosteric mechanism? Take, for instance, the peptide that you quote, it may have like a uh, completely different type of action that has nothing to do with allosteric mechanism. Thank you for your question. Actually, um, of course, I didn't include all data, and first, uh, all agonists and antagonists were tested in radio ligand assay against uh, bungar toxin. So it's um, uh, so uh, bungar toxin uh, binds to orthosteric side. So. Uh, all these ligands are um, primary, uh, uh, have orthosteric uh, binding mechanisms. But uh, uh, I thought about including uh, other <laughs> uh, data, and actually, it's uh, work um, of uh, Ekaterina Antonina Wolfius and Professor Woodkin uh, about peptides, peptides from um, BTS arianthans. Um, snake and um, they do have uh, allosteric component of uh, in, in their action. Yeah. So we, we do have some um, peptides and even proteins with allosteric components, but you know it's harder to analyze their action. Well, I would like to thank you for your question, but, but I also slightly uh, informed about this work and. Uh, the, of course, this is a really hot topic, allosteric or, or orthosteric binding, and maybe it, it was not heard in the audience, but Dennis told about the copper toxin action on GABA receptor. We could clearly distinguish orthosteric and allosteric side, and this is also goes with other compounds. And also, some compounds are active on not trivial, alpha-7 receptor, but in the presence of allosteric agonists. So this has quite, quite many things to do with internalized. And at this, I would like to thank the audience and invite... Oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Can I ask another question? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I could say a question, but I thought... No, 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 there was, was a question. Oh, yeah. yeah, please. Well, uh, can we go back to, uh, uh, to Parkinson's disease? Uh, you said that uh, in the pre-symptomatic um, period, uh, there is an upregulation of um, of acetylcholine receptors, and I was wondering if this is actually not a compensatory mechanism, but rather uh, the actual toxicity. Because after all, uh, the toxic models of um, Parkinson's are not perfect anyway. Yeah, absolutely. We do not know why uh, it should be dopaminergic neurons that should be affected by these toxins because these are just mitochondrial toxins. Uh, so the question is whether it has uh, the effect of these toxins on the cholinergic system that causes uh, an excitatory uh, toxicity on the uh, substantial nigra and more specifically in the, um, uh, in the putamen um, uh, neuron, uh, 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 nerve terminals of these neurons. That's a very interesting question. Uh, I think we need further studies to answer your question because at um, this um, level we just, you know, um, used homogenates, so it's not uh, really detailed um, investigations. So we need to get deeply to uh, neurons. So, yeah. And if you really allows me to add. Uh, you know, why we very, how to say, thoroughly and mildly and politely use the term compensatory mechanism because finally, when it's almost over, there are practically no receptors. So you might think at a certain stage the, the level of receptor to, come, to have it is quite good, but on the other hand, it wasn't mentioned here, there are no good correlation between the RNA and uh, functional receptor level. So this is, you're absolutely right with your. Doubts. Thank you. If there are 